Welcome to a particularly uh, cosmopolitan edition of Human Human Architecture today here, and the title is Prototropic Hawaii or Honolulu Hawaii. And we have found the most perfect guest for that, who, um, just like your host, Martin, uh, is uh, from many places and is at many places. And our guest today, and we can bring number three, is, uh, is Dimitri uh, Kim, who is uh, uh, born and raised in Hawaii, uh, is currently far away uh, teaching and educating and practicing in New York City. And, uh, but he's broadcasting, uh, uh, broadcasted to us from one of his genetic homes in, in Korea. So, hello, Dimitri. Hello, how are you? I'm hello. good. Uh, thanks for tuning in, uh, especially after all this traveling and you're 19 hours away and time zones all mixed up. You're also at, at a specific part in Korea where something very specific happens right now, right? Right. So uh, I don't know if uh, people are sort of familiar with what's going on in Korea. So they ousted the last president due to some uh, the, this controversy, and they just had an election of a new president uh, just yesterday. So they, sh I haven't heard yet because I haven't turned on the TV, but they will be announcing the winner, and there will be a big sort of a uh, ceremony in Seoul today. Mm -hmm. So uh, and there's also another controversy about oust. I think there's still a lot of uh, remaining supporters of the last president. Uh, they don't like the fact that she's she's currently being ousted. So, really interesting period that I, I sort of chose to pick and to sort of come back. And of course, it was a bit of a family emergency, so I'm here. But, uh, but yeah, so right. it is an interesting place, and 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 yet here again and. Well, good luck with all of that and, and, and still finding the time to tune in. So let, let's jump in that. We want to talk a project of yours, one of your many projects, but this is a publication project. And it takes advantage of, uh, you know, you again being from Hawaii, but uh, stepping away and traveling the world and looking at uh, similar scenarios um, of urban coastlines. My, my new boss, my VCAA, just called it Ocean Cities, right? So mm. one of them, if we can get number three, is obviously sort of the, the synonym of that is, is New York City. So uh, yeah, just brief us in, Dimitri. Where, where are you coming from when you talk about this uh, research topic? So, uh, so right from the get-go, I, I started this journal, obviously, from you know, the love of the island. And the fact that I you know, I'm sort of have to work away from it uh, as much as I, I want to be home, uh, it sort of, um, you know, it was kind of a more kind of a natural uh, tendency for me to just want to work on something that I that made me feel at home. So that was the beginning. But uh, at, but but that was the, the the juxtaposition of this journal came because, uh, as you can see from the image three, there's two there's a sharp contrast. On the left, you see the uh, the old sort of 650s image of the the old Manhattan skyline with the the Chrysler building. And on the right, you see uh, the the you know brand new high rise. It's the Shanghai uh, 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 Stock Exchange building by OMA uh, Architects. What you see in these two images are are, are difference between the old what I call the epitome district, uh, the, basically the city that epitomizes what you typified as a urban center of the world. But on the right is where a new epitome district is. It's a new city. It's the new epitome district where the, the, uh, the, the new central position within the global settings. Mm -hmm. And this sort of steps off into the fact that uh, there are many rising uh, epitome cities like this. And more importantly, uh, these cities are, are, are focused on the, uh, the fact that they are resource rich. And of course, Places like Hawaii and Rio, there are, uh, there are tons of resource, uh, resources that, that, that these you know, big cities are normally covet. And of course, in the past, these big cities would, uh, would exploit the, the cities of their colonial, like say colonial or, or, or ruling cities. But now because these, these you know, cities like you know, Rio and other emergencies are free, they are free to explore and expand their, uh, 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 their own economy and, exp and, and, and explore their own, uh, 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 their, you know, uh, next phase uh, with their with their with their agenda. So, mm -hmm. and that's what the sort of kind of whole conversation of uh, of the intro of this journal is about. Yeah, yeah. How that there's a new rising cities, and the first journal first uh, issue of this journal talks about the real the, the Janeiro, which at the time when I was writing this, the, the Olympic was happening, the uh, the BRICS Bank uh, was uh, was initiated, 
uh, they they found a huge sums of uh, oil uh, finding in 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 Brazil. So there was a lot of exciting things were happening in in, in, in Rio. And of mm-hmm. course, Honolulu in the past, you know, five, seven, you know, ten years for that matter, there has been uh, uh, economic and 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 building development likes of which I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. And, and so I thought it was the right the, time for me to the do statistics, this statistics, right, um, about and the si- that's what the issue is about. Uh-huh. And, and we, just to remind the audience that statistically we just reached a point where more people live in urban, urban areas, meaning in cities, than in rural areas, and this is going to increase. But let's spend some time and go to the number four and talk about your city, the city you grew up in and around. And uh, there's an interesting thing you taught me uh, just before the show in, in, in warming up that you said the Romans as an empire um, have never produced uh, food for their own people. They brought it in from Egypt, right? And this is interesting in relationship to Hawaii, which having been so remote, had been totally self-sustained. And we now reached a point what the, where the Romans were, where we like ship in like in 80, 90 percent. But we still, and you want to start off with this sort of perception of Hawaii, right? Which these, this picture pairs about. Sure, I, I mean, I mean, everybody's familiar with this picture. I, I mean, you don't have to live in Hawaii to be familiar with this picture. Mm-hmm. It's the, the hula skirt girls, the Palm Beach, the surfer, you know, the whole shebang. And, and, and believe it or not, even to this day, even the fact after the fact that you know our, our recent president has come from Hawaii, mm-hmm. this is still the image of where everybody elsewhere has the image. This is the image of Hawaii they have. Yeah. And 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 I really wanted to point this out because, it, you know, um, we both know as somebody who who's from Hawaii, Hawaii has much more to offer. Mm-hmm. In, in innovative people, entrepreneurship, and and of course, there's tons of uh, you know exciting things that are happening. But yet we're still back in this kind of 50s, this kind of homogeneous image of the Hawaii. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I want, this is the first article uh, I talk about is, is the fact that this is the, both uh, uh, the, the sort of cursory glance image that most people have about Hawaii. Mm-hmm. But, we, but there's much more underneath the surface. Yeah, and, 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 and in fact, this is arcane, right? This image really doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and talking about Waikiki, I mean, has a history that, and there's a reason why that it all is the case, because we have two industries that run us, right? Number one is the military, and number two is the tourism industry. And the tourism industry is creating this image for economic reasons, why? Right? And, and number five, they're suppressing um, and, and uh, real history because it doesn't seem to sell quite as well as the sort of ticky uh, message, right? Well, which is which is funny because all the other tourist uh, you know cities like Rome, for instance, I, I mentioned this, or for that matter, if you if you go into more contemporary cities like San Francisco, mm-hmm. they sell their culture, they sell their culture, not a fake sort of uh, you know superficial image yep. like this image that we see here, but they sell their culture, and that's why people come in. It's not the, the, the sort of a cheesy, when they come to those places like Rome, they don't want to, uh, you know, you know uh, eat the, uh, the, 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 the postcard image of the city. You know, they want to see the real city of culture. They want to learn that. And, there, and, and, it's, and not so surprisingly, and we, as we all know, there is this amazing culture in, in Hawaii. I, I talk about this in the article, the, the, this article uh, where this picture comes from, which is called the uh, "Don't Speak Hawaiian to Me" by Lindsay Wilbur. Uh, 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 Lindsay Wilbur. Mm-hmm. It talks about how, in in Hawaii, you know, we had a uh, you know uh, amazing drama uh, in history. Like there was a great naval battles. There was a dynastic feud. You know, we had a we have a conquering you know king. You know, who, you know, who was raised from prof, you know, raised from prophecy and conquered the all five islands single-handedly. Mm-hmm. Who made relationship with other monarchies all, all over the world. Yeah. The, the 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 king of uh, Ta- England uh, acknowledged that the kingdom Cosmopolitan, of Hawaii. Right. This is amazing mm-hmm. culture, but we're not selling that. We're mm-hmm. selling this. We're selling this hula skirt. And we're you know Waikiki Beach. And we're selling right. out. We're selling out with that. And diving yeah. into the, the the urban fabric that is fairly new. I mean, I was about to think about you know to start thinking about the show in New York City, I mean, from a European point of view, and you also hold a, a diploma engineer architect uh, sort of background, having been in, in my home culture quite a bit while I was here. Deutschland. And so, uh, exactly. So from a European point of view, even the mainland, America, you know, is, is new, is brand new uh, compared to Europe and to compared to Rome and Italy, which you have said. So even New York City, and, and never mind, we shouldn't forget how sort of the indigenous population has been suppressed 
suppressed and basically eliminated. That's a bad thing, but, but that aside, which cannot be uh, forgiven, but that aside uh, offered some uh, tremendous opportunity to, to make a city. And, and, and this city here, number, number six, you brought in another author who is my uh, dear uh, colleague Kazi Ashraf, who has moved on to Bangladesh. And hi, Kazi. <laughs> Wish you all the best. We miss you. Bangladesh, yes. Mm -hmm. So I um, so this sort of segues into the Hawaii now. Where 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 are we state of now? And of course, uh, I don't have to explain. I think everybody knows what's exactly what's happening in Hawaii. But the perspective of what's you know again, that's why we're doing this article in this book, and this journal is that uh, Hawaii. There's a development happening in Hawaii that's unlike we have ever seen. There's uh, urbanization is happening in Hawaii at at a pace that is. Uh, uh, almost, I would say, e equivocal to some, you know, much more faster rising cities like, you know, Dubai and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, Beijing and Shanghai, because mm -hmm. they're, you know, rapidly developing. Yeah. And I talk about the fact that Honolulu was, or, you know, place like Honolulu and Waikiki is already a city, but we're sort of rapidly developing into a place where we no longer sort of, we're not, we're not sure if we are. This is the direction that we're, we, we, the direction that we want to head, head towards, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. we're sort of losing the kind of a. Uh, 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 the, uh, the the sort of a sort of a cultural epicenter of a city that that reminds us of this is a, of this is a city that has amazing experience. Um, the article is called the Metrophilia. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, I'm sorry. The, the article is actually called the Level uh, Metrophilia, and we talk about the fact that there's this experience of the city that we can all take for granted in a great cities like New York or, or Paris. That it's about walking experience, yeah. horizontal experience of the yeah, city. Yeah, yeah. But as you can see from the image uh, that, that you see, it, we're we're slowly going towards this uh, the vertical uh, 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 experience, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, the, or what the Kazi calls metrophilia, mm -hmm. which is uh, love of all things erect and stand alone. Yeah, yeah. So so we're sort of losing that face, and and I'm, what we discuss in this interview article is where we're we going, and 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 how we can sort of kind of preserve some of the kind of a real, uh, 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 a genuine culture. Uh, urban culture that we can't lose as yeah. we rapidly shift towards the uh, more, more towards the central urbanization yeah, yeah. in Kaka'ako and elsewhere. And at this point, I would like to interject um, that um, we talk about publication. I wish you guys would be here and could. Uh, I have my very own complimentary copy with you that you said might be a prototypical version. So. Uh, so I hold this in my hand, and, and I wish you guys could be here and flip through with me, because the, the level of sophistication and, and craft and, and tactility um, is just amazing. And you choose, um, you took advantage of uh, one of your um, educational expertises, being a UH uh, Manoa a graduate and, and expert in graphic design. And, and you use sure. this here in a brilliant way to craft this publication. And to me, being a Howley not from here, it is sort of in the tradition of, uh, you know, you, the people here in the past who have made things, right, which we basically have stopped doing. I mean, everything we sell here as being tiki in Hawaiian comes from somewhere <laughs> else, and we ship it in, right? So you, in a very non-nostalgic way, uh, sort of reconnect to, to this tradition uh, in, in, in looking at craft, you, becoming a craftsman, um, you know, in addition to being a draftsman. So this is, and I, I showed sure. this to a couple generations of students as, as motivations. And what also doesn't come across is the sort of uh, uh, pastel, uh, monochromatic um, um, sort of uh, layout you, you use, everything is toned down. And again, doesn't, and maybe it's good you guys can see it because uh, maybe so many in the audience want one now, so you have to go in another uh, production and produce more of these. And I would sure. say these are these and, are hand uh, all, uh, these are handcrafted, and of course, right? Uh, just um, write us an email, prototropic at gmail.com. But uh, but maybe this can be a segue to uh, why the the book has been so extremely finely crafted. Uh, as you as you all know, the, the the print is really dying, and industry itself is you know yeah. you know it's it's sort of concaving in itself. And can can and we get picture two to illustrate your words, Dimitri? Sure. So well, let's go to the slide number. Uh, uh, let's go to slide number uh, number one. Okay, let's go to one. Even better. There we go. Mm-hmm. We see it. So. Uh, 
be, because print design, as much as I, I, I think something that all architects have, do have affinities for, is we love print, we love books. But after all, it's still dying. And I, I because, uh, by the way, this book is entirely self-published and independently produced. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I made this, I know I needed to make something that's so special that it's not something that people can simply discard. It's something that people want to keep. Mm -hmm. There had to be a novelty value to this book. So if you look through this entire thing, and again, and you've already mentioned that how finely crafted, but they're, they're very strategically crafted. And they're meant to sort of a completely, uh, uh, the design part of the is that they're meant to completely uh, uh, wash away the, the sort of uh, pastel image of a typical Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Really show the Hawaii as it is. That's why you see black and white images on these photos. Because mm -hmm. I want to show Hawaii the way it's supposed to be not the sort of the kind of Photoshop colors we see in this yeah. hundreds of brochure, free brochure you see in the Waikiki beaches. It is something that people should be able to uh, some, uh, hold on to, put it on their t uh, you know, coffee table and, and, and be able to, uh, you know, constantly, you yeah, know, yeah. be able to ha constantly have it in their, uh, uh, you know, their, uh, you know, reading and look list. Yeah. So, and talking authenticity and the real city with real activity, let's jump to number seven here uh, as a picture, which uh, is in Rio, right? So number, so number seven. Don't be confused. Is actually I was, not I was fooling number you. Number seven is actually Honolulu. That's mm -hmm. Kakako mm -hmm. and Chinatown. Mm -hmm. There's a Kakako image of the uh, the the mural doing the Pawa Hawaii, and right below is 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 a Chinatown doing the Ch our China Walk. But that's a good segue for for us to discuss about how these two epitome district cities that I'm ta I talk about in the first article, Rio and Honolulu, how these two cities are alike. So if you look at the uh, the actual real image of the the slide number 18, mm -hmm. if you look at slide number 18, they look almost identical. So what you're looking at is a uh, there's this there's a very popular and, and, and attractive area called Lapa in Rio de Janeiro, mm -hmm. where just like Chinatown in Art Walk, where all these different uh, in, uh, individuals of youth and, and music and culture they they, they collide and they, they, they gather together. Yeah, yeah. Can and, we get which is a picture because, 18 uh, to you, illustrate if you understand about the Rio? Oh, we Go got ahead. it now. The audience has it now. Mm -hmm. Did you see what you're so talking if you, about? If you understand about the, the, the dynamics of Rio, there's always the, there's this image of this rampant uh, 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 violence and, and, and poverty. But what you see in this uh, you know, image of this Lapa, again, these all these are my photos, by the way. I, I took them myself. Mm -hmm. What you see is, is a vibrant community. And it, it's, it's astounding how... You know, it, we always talk about the sort of a negative side of the uh, these uh, the cities that we never discuss, like Rio and Honolulu. Uh -huh. Honolulu, we always discuss this, you know, this uh, palm trees and hula girls. And Rio, we always discuss about, you know, violence and, and crime and drugs. Yeah. What we don't see is this image. There's a real culture. Yeah, there's yeah. a real contemporary. Uh, there's a real people living in the city, by the way, and there's a real culture. There's a real people living in it and making it vibrant yeah, and, yeah. and strong and, you know, and, 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 and and that's what I wanted to show that the fact that so we, we can city, we can learn from each other, right? So we can are, learn are collide, from each other. My, my, collide, whenever I think about the two cities as a com thing. comparison, I think about like that things close down at 9 p.m. here in in Honolulu, Hawaii, and that's the time when they open in Rio, right? So they run on a different clock, socially mm -hmm. speaking, right? Um, bef before we get too excited about that, and let's quickly bring picture two back because this is like ingrained and laser cut into the back of it, all the cities you kind of looked at. But let's also uh, jump to the architectural scale. So let's jump to number eight, which one is one of the mid-century uh, innovative icons of our town here, right? Photo collage. By so, you. so number eight is the, uh, hold on, let me, so number eight. That's uh, Ossipov's IBM. So that's number eight to the Ossipov uh, IBM. Um, so, so when we, I, I sort of, I, I sort of end the uh, Kazi's article with a fantastic picture uh, of the Ossipov's building, you know, shooting into the skyline. And again, and I think if any, uh, you know, any lover of architecture would see that, wow, this is fantastic. This is a beautiful building. And if you ask, by the way, this is from Hawaii. I don't, I don't think anybody would believe it. I think if when they see this. I, it, it's it's a powerful image of what I, I would like to represent Hawaii as, mm -hmm. and that's what this art. I did this book because this is the way I want to represent Hawaii: sophisticated, yeah, 
beautiful, multicultural, diverse, and strong cultural with diverse population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think as a building, this this you know this building sort of epitomizes that. Mm-hmm. It's looking into the future at the same time, really respecting the past. Exactly. You know, like, May we jump over nine and bring ten really really quick, which is a, a Dicky uh, project that is just in my neighborhood around the corner that so, another so, colleague of ours took as as an inspiration to um, to 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 start off from and sort of reinterpret the the tropical um, easy breezy uh, nature of dwelling in Hawaii right so uh, it's funny I don't, I actually went to the architecture school for a couple of years in UH but nobody has ever talked about this ever I, I discovered it when I was doing research for the article mm-hmm. this is uh, this is Bochette house by Ossip Pabi it was built in about you know 40s oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah. this house is a case study house it is the case study house for Hawaii, there's a reason why all Hawaii track homes look like this mm-hmm. because of this house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and I was and, shame and, on me. And, I was and, mistaking and, it for Dicky, and that's what our Asipov worked for Dicky in his first years, and that's why it's highly inspired by it, right? Inspired by it, right? And 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 I would like to mention the fact that even though uh, it's incredibly iconic, and and I I think because Asipov was still working from the sort of a modern canon. Mm-hmm. They didn't quite get the fact that this is a home for Hawaii, and that's why it segues into uh, David's project about tropical case study house. Mm-hmm. How home should really be built yeah. for tropical can, places. Can like we get Hawaii. number thirteen for and that? Also, that probably represents yeah. it best. There so we if go. we look at that, this image again, and, and as I said, and this is something that we, uh, David and I discussed it for a while. Hawaii really needs only two things for a beautiful home: mm-hmm. a roof and a floor. That's it. Yeah. You don't need anything else. We have a you know 365 days of you know beautiful you know 75 to 80 83 degrees weather. Mm-hmm. You don't need anything else. Mm-hmm. Everything should be light. Everything should protect you from the sun. Mm-hmm. Everything should let the breeze in. And that's exactly what this stripped down version of what you know what I would call you know a case study house for Hawaii does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. By the way, maybe this is important for me to uh, uh, discuss uh, right now. So at the lab in New York, we are in the process of uh, organizing an event, a competition for a tropical case study house competition mm-hmm. that will be released around the uh, early fall of 2017. Awesome. So that we can uh, start engaging really in the way, the same way the original case study house program was, which was collectivizing all these amazing ideas about yeah. housing and technology and architecture at the time and bring it into fruition so that everybody can share this idea yeah. And learn from it. And, and illustrating again, that would be if we can get number nine, which is the case study house number 22 by uh, uh, Koenig uh, and the Sushtal house. And just for the audience, when we hear David, we're very familiar with him, so we don't even mention his last name. As David Rockwood, um, our uh, Tropic Here colleague, who uh, did the inaugural show of Human Humane Architecture way back, if you guys want to revisit that. Dimitri, as exciting as it always is with you, but we're running out of time. We're getting into the last five minutes, and um, I think we should talk a little bit about, about the other city you mentioned that we can learn so much from and look at its sort of gritty nature. And maybe we bring number 14 uh, for that. 14. So uh, I. So, so this is a sort of if this is an image that I captured in Rio of uh, it's a favela. It's a favela in uh, in uh, a little bit closer to the city of God. Um, it's interesting that favela is, as you know, is a shanty town. Uh, it's illegal slum homes. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is that everybody lives in these places. And what you're looking at is basically a, a electrician a connecting cables and electricity, you know, illegally free for all the homes in favelas. Yeah, parasiting. So, I, so you, you, there's amazing uh, pictures of people paying for this service of this guy to connect the home, but yet none of them pays for their their electricity and and, and their uh, and their their cable home. I I didn't show this picture so that you know everybody's sort of knocking the the power company, but the fact that but that there is a genuine need for uh, for for uh, for housing in, in Rio, just like as you know. Hawaii has the greatest uh, homeless uh, 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 populations per capita in U.S. Mm-hmm. We, there's, as 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 the city becomes more d- dense and and more more compact, uh, th- this situation will rise. It, it's a problem of the in any urban cities. Now, 
in Rio, it, it was dealt uh, organically. It basically people literally, you know, built these homes around uh, open areas and 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 DIY style built their homes around these uh, and wired their homes, but give electricity. Mm-hmm. I think Hawaii, we don't have this kind of a you know organic you know pamphlet. You know, I, I think uh, yeah. if anybody you know start plugging illegally in you know start building track homes, you know, they'll be raised, which is kind of unfortunate. I think it's something that, <laughs> like the something that maybe we can learn from favelas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> right? it's, it's awesome. You know? And getting to Honolulu, and we were like, we, we lose Kaka'ako. Kaka'ako was a little like that. It wasn't a dwelling a neighborhood, but it was a, a no, multifunctional, a gritty, I, 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 yeah, I, gritty and, but it gets gentrified. So now we have Kali we have left, right? And we hopefully want to, want to keep that. To that nature and uh, maybe we can get to jump over the next couple of pictures really fast get 15 and 16 and 17 because we only have two minutes left of the show so uh, i'll go back so as you can see so jumping from the art uh, pictures of this you know electrical wires you can see the how um, amazing a plethora of you know uh, people living in this area mm-hmm. the city is in rio it's in favelas it's not in the it's not in these, you know, rich, expensive homes beyond gates. If you look at number 17, image, that's an image of a, a typical, more upper-class homes. Mm-hmm. They all live underneath a cage of walls, a yeah. cage of barrage of protection. Yeah, but yeah. it's the real cities in real really happens in these, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 illegal uh, 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 and organically grown uh, uh, slums mm-hmm. like the favelas. So this is where the real city looks sort of looks like it in Rio. And I'm not saying there isn't a modern version of it, and of course there is. Yeah, yeah. But I, I captured this image because again, this is where all yeah, I would imagine this would be the equivalent of what would ha- what would see, what we see in uh, Kakako uh, exactly. uh, Boulevard. It's getting uh, there. About five years ago, right? When we when we used to have also all, all industrial factories and car shops yeah. and and few artists living there, but it, and no big high-rise condos by Kamehameha Estates. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So we're running out of time. We want to attribute to the tradition of the show that we always end with a positive outlook to things, and we want to share uh, some some talking case studies and, and one of your projects before we phase out. So this is number nineteen and twenty. This uh, is nineteen. So number nineteen and twenty uh, uh, um, basically uh, uh, highlights the sort of uh, emerging architects uh, uh, part of the journal. Uh, yeah. there, uh, there's a young architect named Steven Sanchez, uh, who, uh, who I went to school with, came out with terrific ways to uh, come out with an a, a office space for uh, a, a tightly, uh, uh, because in Rio there's a very uh, a need for uh, a, a high-valued uh, office space for uh, new businesses, but there isn't any. Uh, people can't afford it. So, uh, uh, so basically, uh, Stephen, uh, in his work, uh, it, it's called the uh, uh, AAA uh, Space for All. Uh, uh, he came out with a way to sort of algorithmically find areas in which uh, uh, highly valued office space can be uh, uh, delineated and they can be uh, uh, spaced and, and, and organized so that strategically these spaces can come up without having the high price tag of uh, having a uh, fancy office space in high-rise mm-hmm. buildings. So. Uh, so it's it's a very fascinating, interesting project. How to sort of maximize space in a place where everything is becoming more expensive and yeah. and 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 gentrified. That's exactly what we need here, and that's the end of the show. So much more to talk, but we are out of time. So uh, Dimitri, please. Uh, stay the cosmopolitan enfant terrible and uh, bring us inspiration from all the places you are and come home every now and then and share them with us and shake this place up and until then um, have a good time back home in korea one of your homes and thanks again for your uh, critical and uh, encouragement appreciate it and thank you again for having me and mahalo all right All right, thank you, and see you all back uh, for the summer. The summer uh, DeSoto and I are going to do with me going back to where I just said Dimitri has been uh, for the last couple of years to my home in Germany, and uh, we look forward to see you for these shows. They're going to be a little bit different. (laughs) Bye-bye.